Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the house of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for joining us online. We love and miss you. <laughs> um, I know there's been a lot of good news, and everyone's very excited for um, uh, what you saw, the, that uh, we're going to be able to start uh, coming together as small groups at home. Can I ask that you just give us a day or two um, that we will officially, as Shafa Durbanville, um, officially just say what our statement is and where we stand on that. Um, uh, some things we just have to think through and, and pray through, because um, I know some of our small groups um, is more size of a church than an actual small group. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll get back to you on all of that and uh, some maybe some do's and don'ts that we'll um, suggest. As we, as we go into this new week. Right, it's a great, great privilege to continue with the sermon series on the life of Joseph. And um, I know that many of you are excited um, about the sermon series. I know many of you are concerned I'm not going to finish the sermon series. I am going to finish the sermon series by the end of this year, we hope and pray. Um, but this morning's sermon is really probably the most important of all of them for many of us. In the space we find ourselves so I think many of us will relate I think many of us relate to the pit but many of us will relate to this particular part and this is chapter 5 and we are going through the prison test and um, there's some key things that I'm going to be sharing that's really going to hopefully open up for us to, to understand this um, few principles, these few principles, and these principles will help you to get to your destiny. Right, let's run through them. So we've done the pride test, we've done the pit test, we've done the palace test, we've done the purity test, we're halfway, we're on the prison test. And um, we just got that um, Potiphar's wife lied, and Joseph is going to, to jail. All right. Now, I don't know if this um, sermon series has been convicting you as much as it's been convicting me. It has really been giving me new perspective on so many things in my own life. And um, so don't feel that, you know, the pastor's got this down and that's why he's bringing it because he's got this, the handles on this. I do not have the handles on this at all. In fact, I feel, as, as Paul says, the chief of all sinners as I work through the sermon series. And, um, you know, sometimes you kind of feel a little bit like a hypocrite and, and I'm almost to that point of going, Lord, woe is me. Um, can't you give someone else to give this series who is a little holier, a little bit more righteous, a little bit um, more qualified than me. But at the same time, I need to remind us that truth stays truth. All right? Because anyone that brings truth and grace. And what I really, really love about this morning's um, songs, I didn't speak to Dale. Dale hit the nail on the head on that last song, and we're going to finish that song, The Hope in Christ. Let's get straight into Scripture. Genesis 39, verse 13 to 23. Now, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm going to skip through. Um, some of the, the scriptures, but um, so if you want to follow at home or you want to go read this later, we're in Genesis 39. And you can also put a bookmark in Romans 5 if you want to follow us, the two, two main scriptures that we're going to be reading this morning. When she saw that she was holding his cloak and he had fled, she called out to her servants. Soon all the men came running. Look, she said, my, mus my husband has brought this Hebrew slave here to make fools of us. He came into my room to rape me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream, he ran outside and got away. But he left the cloak behind with me. She kept the cloak with her until her husband came home. Then she told, her, she told him her story. That Hebrew slave you brought into our house tried to come in and fool around with me, she said. But when I screamed, he ran outside, leaving his cloak with me. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. 
and there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his favorable love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. God is always in your trial. I just want to pause there. God is always in your trial, as we see in that scripture. Jumping down to verse 22. Before long, the, law, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Now something I haven't mentioned to this point in the sermon series is that all these tests are tests of stewardship. All ten of these tests are stewardship tests. How well he would steward his actions, how well he would steward things that belong to another, how well he steward his attitude, how well we steward our bodies. These are all stewards, um, tests of stewardship that we have. In other words, you will not fulfill your destiny if you are not. Scripture says, be faithful with the little. And he will give us much. Sometimes we look down on the little that we have and we go, Lord, I want more. I want more. I want a bigger salary. I want a bigger house. Uh, I want more responsibility at work. I want more. And the Lord says, can you be diligent with what you have? Right. So the prison test this morning is the test of perseverance. It's God's developing character in our lives through the things we persevere through. It's God developing character in our lives through the things we persevere, we persevere through. All right. So we've been looking through some keys and through some um, formulas and through some simple steps to get us through every, every um, test that we've been going through. This morning, we find the formula for character in Romans 5. This is our formula. So let's read this formula, and then we're going to go through the formula. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance is character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured, in, poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. This is a very well-known piece of Scripture. We know this very well, but I'm going to read that first part again. But we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Now the Greek word that they use there for glory is the same root word that we find rejoice. So in other words, Rejoice in your tribulations. In fact, to the point that we should be asking and wishing for tribulation. Tell me, when you're going through a trial, when you're going through tribulation, do you rejoice? Yay, Jesus. <laughs> Take away my freedom. COVID-19. <laughs> Stay at home. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Lord, I wish that COVID-19 can keep us locked down for another six months. <laughs> Let us rejoice. <laughs> I don't hear anyone saying that, right? So I'm not saying wish upon tribulation. Um, I, I'm, I'm not saying like we must really go for this and say, Lord, woe is me, bring it on. But can we rejoice nonetheless when there's tribulation? So the key is, is key one, tribulation produces perseverance. Christ himself says in John 16, in this world you will have tribulation. You will have tribulation. Even Jesus said so. James was kind enough to remind us. James 1, James 1, 2, 3. James 1, verse 2 and 3. 
My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So trials produce patience. Tribulation produces perseverance. Now I hope I can do this justice. You're going to have to stick with me. If, you, if you're at home, grab a pen, um, grab your cell phone, take this down so that we can get to understand what perseverance is, what patience is, what trials is, and what tribulation is. First of all, patience. Patience is waiting with contentment. In other words, it's not tapping your foot and looking at your watch. So many of us work in Cape Town. Many of us sit often in traffic, right? Anyone ever sit in traffic on the way to work back in the 19th century before COVID-19? Do you remember those days? Lord, make COVID-19 stop that I can sit in traffic. Right, so you sit in traffic, and, and I know that none of you have ever swore at the car in front of you or just started like, oh, my word, and then you swap lanes, and no matter what lane you're in, it is the slowest lane in the country. Have you noticed that? No matter, like, you pull immediately to, 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 to the right, and then the next thing, the whole left lane's moving, and you go, oh, no, I'm not today, and you go into that left lane, and oh, that's still in the right lane starts moving. And you're like, okay, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to stay in the left. And the right keeps moving and keeps moving and keeps moving. You go, no, 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 I've got the anointing. And you go into the right lane and stop. <laughs> right? Patience. Waiting with contentment. If you have a problem with patience, here's a little tip. Jock's here this morning. Get a motorbike. I know the reason you hate people on motorbikes is because they can wave on their way by. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! I'm on my way. Get a motorbike. You'll never have to wait again. <laughs> That's Dale saying amen. I've been trying to convince him for the last two years to get a bike. I have an agenda in this, this church, as you can pick up. All right. So, patience waiting with contentment. Perseverance is fighting the battle while waiting with contentment. In other words, perseverance involves a battle or a war. A trial is brief. Tribulation is long. Therefore, perseverance is a long and difficult trial. Did you get that? Do I need to run through it again? Run through it again. Okay. Patience, waiting with contentment. Perseverance is fighting a battle with contentment. Perseverance invo involves a battle or a war. Trial is brief. Tribulation is long. Perseverance, therefore, is a long and difficult trial. Amen. We can go home. <laughs> Perseverance, point two, produces character. This is straight out of the Scripture. Listen very carefully. The only way, according to Scripture, that you are going to build in character is through perseverance. The only way. You can go look up in Scripture if there's any other way that you can grow in character. It is the only way. Joseph had to wait 13 years. David was anointed, then ran from Saul for 13 years. They had to persevere for 13 years. Paul, there's something about 13, Paul was 13 years in Antioch before he started traveling, before he started his ministry. Now some of you are saying, but I have persevered for longer than 13 years. Thank you for saying that. Abraham persevered for 25 years. And some of you are saying, but, but I've, I've done my 25. Awesome. Moses, 40. I'm not sure if any of you have persevered 40 years. Moses persevered, persevered 40 years. And here's the sad thing. Many of the Israelites never got into the promised land because of character, because of disobedience, and because of their character, they were not able to get into the promised land. Right. 
Now listen very carefully. The worst thing you can do for someone is to m- promote them before they're ready. In other words, open the oyster too early. See, with the oyster, there's a process that happens so that a pull can be created. There is sand that has to irritate that oyster until a pull can be be created. The worst thing we can do is to promote someone before their time, to deliver them from the trial that God has put them in. See, Joseph, we find, is always number two. He's always promoted. He has the ability Everywhere he goes, he has the ability, but is it his ability or is it God's favor on his life? Do we rely on God to promote or do we promote ourselves? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a testimony. I've been sharing a lot of testimonies as we're going through the series. And um, we had a guy in Cape Town. And um, he was in the, it's many years ago, he was in the construction industry. And he was one of those guys when you, he, he would just irritate you. You know what I'm saying? When you greet him, he's preachy. Always got a little sermon for you. How are you doing? And then he'd give you a sermon. You know, he was, he was, he was very smug. He, he, he always had this clever answer. You know, you, you're just asking how you're doing and then you're like, you'll come with a smug answer. You're going, like, you know, okay, but I just want to know how you're doing. I didn't want you to be funny or smart. No, he was one of those characters. And um, he believed he had a vision to, do, to build God's kingdom in, in, the, in the construction industry. And um, he really believed he was anointed and called and the man. And he had these great visions and these great ideas. And um, so what he did was he started working for a very big construction company here in the Western Cape, huge construction company in the Western Cape. So he left Cape Town, very upset with the, with, with the, work, the work he was doing. The company wasn't good enough. Nothing was good enough. They never did anything right. Always moaning, 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 moaning. He went to this massive company, and he sat with the CEO of the company and explained to the CEO how anointed he is, how special he is, how amazing he is, how all these visions that he has from God, and he wants to change the world. The problem was that he was never diligent in anything that he was asked to do. He never was diligent in his job. He never did his job. And he kept moaning about the CEO not recognizing how awesome he is. And finally, he got fired because he never did his job. He then came back to Cape Town, and you'd think he might have learned a little something, and then um, I heard about a story of one of our people in the church. Um, they were renovating the house. They got this guy in to renovate the house. Long story short, it was a big cadence. So they had to fire him, get rid of him, and they lost thousands of rands and had to restart from scratch because the guy just did not do the job. Are you with me this morning? In other words, right, he never understood stewardship. So no matter how big the dreams are that God gives us, we cannot not go through the journey that God has for us. And I pray that God has worked with this guy. As I said, it's many, many years ago um, that this happened. I pray that it's changed. I really pray that that was his pit time and that he's really just gotten out of that and he's learned stewardship and he's growing. But if we don't, we will end up doing circles in the desert. We will never go forward. Can I have an amen? Thank you. Genesis 40. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master. Pharaoh became angry with these two officials and put them in prison where Joseph was, in the place of the captain where Joseph was, in the place of the captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time, and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph who looked after them. Right, and we know the story. These guys get dreams, and then 
Joseph says, listen very carefully. So Joseph says the following, this is what this dream means. Three branches represent three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to the position of the chief cupbearer. And please rem um, remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention my name to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. We see Joseph trying to influence the position that he finds himself in. Joseph goes and says, listen, man, awesome, you're going to go back before Pharaoh. Can you do me this one favor? In other words, he was promoting himself. I believe that this cost him another two years. Scripture says that two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. Who gave Pharaoh the dream? Anyone? Uh, let me help you. It was God. Thank you for those at home that got it right. <laughs> trick question. No, it's a trick question. All right, it was God that gave Pharaoh the dream. Two years later. Not two weeks later. Two years later. Let me finish that scripture before I carry on. So, <laughs> So I'm jumping before, before myself. Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for the officials and staff. He summoned his chief cupbearer and the chief baker to join um, the other officials. He then restored the chief baker, at least the chief bearer, to his former position, so he could again uh, hand Pharaoh's cup. But Pharaoh impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had predicted. Listen now. Pharaoh's chief... Capera, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. Right. See, I believe that if Joseph was promoted and the, and the chief, um, the, the cupbearer bearer went and did this, Joseph would have learned that I can make it happen for myself. And he had to learn that it can only be God. And therefore, he failed that character test slightly. He missed it there, and God had to give him two more years in waiting before he could be lifted up. God never rewards manipulation. God never rewards manipulation. God's grace is that our character is great enough to sustain our destiny. Your character needs to be greater than your anointing. We see many pastors falling. We see many uh, men of God falling from grace. And I believe it's because their character was never strong enough to sustain their anointing. People start doing miracles. The Holy Spirit really moves through people. They're really anointed. They're gifted. When they speak, it's just like heaven opening up and the next thing we find them falling in immorality what happened why does it happen it's because our character is not strong enough to sustain our anointing key three character produces hope back to that song that Dale opened with or ended with this morning character produces hope All right, remember that Romans 5 says, and not only that, we glory in this tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance in character, and character, hope. Character is not only how we act, but character is also how we react. Are you with me this morning? Joseph did right, Joseph did the right thing, and suffered the wrong consequences, right? He did what's right. He ran for his life from Potiphar's wife, but he suffered the wrong consequences. Listen very carefully to this. Satan has no new tricks. He has no, no new tricks. Listen to this. What was the evidence of the lie that Joseph was treated, that, uh, that Joseph was eaten by a wild animal? A coat, 
right? What got him into trouble in the first place with his brothers? The coat. What was the evidence that Joseph tried to rape Potiphar's wife? The coat. Right? If I was Joseph, I would never wear a coat again. Ever. I would just like, it can be like this weekend, right? Minus five degrees, I'm fine. I'm good. I, no coat. Not a chance. <laughs> what is Satan keeping, tripping you up on? What is that thing in your life that he keeps on getting you to fall? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs 13. See, hope, listen carefully, hope is not that God will deliver us from our circumstances. Hope is that God will walk you through your circumstances. That's what hope is. Our hope is in God, in Christ, not in our circumstances changing. You see, we see that Joseph in this time, is still ministering in jail. He still has hope. We'll go through the scripture now, now but it says, he saw that these two, the two cupbearers, I, I think I, I mean, it was earlier, I I'm, I'm so not sure where we are on this, but, but I think I read it, but they were both sad. Are we still getting to that? They were both sad. And then he came through to them and then, then he, he ministered to them. In other words, he still had hope. If he didn't have hope, he would not be ministering in prison. He, he would be sitting in his own sadness. So therefore, hope produces an appointment. All right? Mackie, can we go back to that Romans 5? Can we fly that Romans 5? Can you find that for us? Sorry, I didn't put it in there for you. I want us to look at that scripture. And if you can't find it, I'm going to have to go in my notes, which is going to be just as confusing for me. Awesome. Thank you. Verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint. Now for those of you that's Afrikaans, hold on, stick with me. This is a double negative. All right? In other words, not is a negative, and disappoint is a negative. It's like saying, I'm not not angry. It's the same kind of thing. Are you with me this morning? So in other words, with a double negative, it's, it's, it's grammarly incorrect. It's, in, in fact, it's actually, it says, therefore, that hope appoints. Hope does not disappoint. In other words, hope appoints. There's an appointment that God has for you when you have hope. There was an appointment. Yes, here it is. While they were in prison, the cupbearer and the baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw the next morning, he noticed that they looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? He asked them. There's that scripture, right? There was an appointment of God that day in that moment. We're going to get back to that. Now listen. We're all going through some sort of tribulation. Christ said it once again, John 16. In this world, you will have tribulation. Now tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, remember, if respond correctly, produces character. Character produces hope. Hope will produce a divine appointment. The appointment that Joseph had penultimately led him to his destiny. Because there was an appointment of God with these two characters, these two people, God set up an appointment, a divine appointment, that he could interpret the dreams so that penultimately he would walk in the destiny that God had for him. Isn't that beautiful? This 
is the formula that God has for us. And make no mistake, it's hard, but it's great. Perseverance is not something you can just ask for. Character is not something you, perseverance is, but character is not. You can't just pray, Lord, please give me character and ta-da, character. It's through that perseverance, the same way we make a diamond, where there's that pressure that causes the diamond to build and to be formed under the pressure of the earth. It's under that pressure that our, that our character grows that we can finally have a divine appointment that God has called us for. Now you'll remember, we're drawing to a close, you'll remember, and we're going to finish in, in worship with that same song, Dale, if we can, with the hope. And um, then for those of us that's um, online, we're going to break up into to breakout rooms, and we're just going to share what is my tribulation, what am I going through, what, what is God saying to me at this time, what am I hearing from the sermon, and we're going to discuss that. But before we get to that, you remember earlier in one of the sermon series, I, rem- I, I mentioned that Joseph is a type of Christ, right? And the Old Testament foreshadows the story of Christ. We see it with Moses, Daniel, David, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Abraham, many people that are types of Christ. Now listen to how beautiful this is. Joseph was numbered with prisoners, though he did nothing wrong. Christ was numbered with prisoners, though he did nothing wrong. Joseph mentions two prisoners. Christ hung amongst two thieves. One of the prisoners with Joseph was condemned. He was killed. The other was set free. One condemned Christ in his heart on the cross. The other was set free by his heart on the cross. Now listen to this. This is the beautiful part. The butler, right? Joseph said the butler, remember me. But the butler forgot. The thief said to Christ, Remember me, and he did. Listen to this. Even if people forget and don't keep their word to you, Jesus will never forget, and he will always keep his word. Isn't that beautiful? And in closing... Your trial is producing the character in you for you to be able to fulfill your destiny. Whatever you're going through, whatever tribulations, whatever trials, whatever persecution you are going through, it is forming character. Whether you've lost your job, whether you've had to take massive pay cuts, whether you've lost a loved one, during this time whatever you're going through it is producing character so that you can fulfill your destiny if COVID-19 is a trial how's your character when the Lord asked me this one man oh man It hit me like a hockey stick through the face. When I was playing hockey at school, um, I played hockey in high school, uh, I had braces and I, I was very aggressive. Um, and I came at the one guy, I think, I think we were playing um, sax or Ronda Bosch, boys I one of these schools, and I came on the wrong side of the guy and the guy just took back and swung and as he swung, yeah, you're supposed to come from this side. I came from this side. And I just got this hockey stick to the mouth. And my, my lips got stuck to my braces. That's how I feel right now. As I'm going through this, and as God asked me, if COVID-19 is a trial, how's your character doing? Am I moaning? 
Am I breaking the law? Am I upset? Or am I rejoicing? Am I celebrating? And as Tony Suzette Harting always says, is this an amen or an ouch? For me, this is an absolute ouch with an amen. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you this morning that you allow the trials and the tribulations in our lives that we can persevere so we can grow character. And as our character grows, Lord, that it brings hope and that the hope comes so that we can have divine appointments. We thank you for the divine appointments in our lives. We pray that we will recognize them. We pray for the gift of understanding stewardship. We pray for the grace to understand stewardship. Forgive us, Lord, where we moan and complain and where, we, where we, we speak evil about people and government and all these things for the God that nothing's right and all we do is moan and complain, Lord, instead of rejoicing, instead of seeing the trials before us and rejoicing in our trials, Lord, we moan. And Lord, we recognize that that's only through this persevering and growing in patience that we are able to form our character. I pray, Lord, that you'll not stop. Thank you, Lord, that you will not promote us before our time. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we can walk in the destinies you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.